Hello everyone and welcome to episode 6 of Project Ozone 3. How are you doing? How's life? I'm extremely excited about today's episode because today is the day that we're gonna have EMC, an unlimited resource. I thought we should go alphabetically and start with Abyssal Craft because we are going to need 12 Oblivion Catalysts in order to make the Philosopher's Stone. It's 12, right? Yeah. So let's start with making the Necronomicon. The next item that we are going to need is called a Monolith Stone. We don't have anything and there is no recipe for this. That's because they get spawned by Shoggoths. I've been to the Twilight Forest and I haven't seen a single Shoggoth, the lair at least. So we are going to have to spawn Shoggoths. There is a Shoggoth biomass which uh, it makes Shoggoths to spawn and there is a recipe for it which is very easy. You just need a slime block and some Corallium gems. And guess what I'm standing on? Corallium ore. That's plenty, I guess. I'm not gonna spawn Shoggoths on our base, so we are going to have a temporary platform made out of cobblestone, and then I'll put the Shoggoth biomass on top. That should be enough, I guess. So let me make a platform, and I'll be right back. I think this is big enough, right? Yeah, it should be fine. So we put you guys here and wait for Shoggoths. I made 9, I don't know if we need more. They were not spawning for some reason and I thought it needs to be covered. Then that guy spawned. And they have changed, they now throw stuff at you. <laughs> anyway, we need to make them walk a little bit so that they spawn this Shogot Ooze and from that we should be able to get the Monolith Stone. And they're causing holes. That's not good. There you go, it's now 3 blocks thick. My Shogot! You should not do this at night because it is a nightmare. But in any case, once they walk enough and they cover the ground with this Shogot ooze, you will have a pillar of monolith stone with a statue of a god on top. There's also a Shogot biomass in the center there, so it will spawn more Shogots automatically. Uh, basically, that's what we want. We don't want anything else. Well, I believe that we have plenty. This should be enough. In order to do the rituals in Abyssal Craft, we're going to need some sort of an energy which is called PE. So for instance, in order to make an Oblivion Catalyst, we're going to need 5000 PE. So how do we gather PE? Well, there are two ways. One of them is you make a monolith stone pillar, you put a statue of the god on top, and you hold your Necronomicon in your hand. You should be hit by something. Yep, there you go. Now we have 5 PE. I don't like this method because uh, you get lightning, you get shoggoths, and it gets messy very soon. We're going to do sacrifice. Oh, and by the way, in between the episodes, I made an additional island because we didn't have enough space on the main island. And don't worry, the astral sorcery stuff is not going to stay there. That's just temporarily until we get the energy condensers. I'm thinking that I want to do this ritual underground. Not the ritual itself, I mean gathering PE. So if we make a tunnel from here, from the center, should be fine, right? I'll be right back. It is times like this that I wish I would have made a hammer and I didn't. So let us see if this apple helps. It says that it will give me haste and saturation. Let's see if it works. It gives you haste for 10 seconds. That's garbage. So. I made one of these. A hammer would have been easier, but I'm lazy. Correct me if I'm wrong, so insta mining is not a thing in Project Ozone? Because this is stupid, I have haste 3. Alright guys, here's the plan. So I upgraded this guy with redstone as much as possible and now we're going to emboss it with a cobalt rod because that will give it momentum. So it should go faster. And then we're going to make a beacon and we're going to give haste too. You should work. Where are you? Yes. It's still not insta mining. How is this possible? We're gonna max this guy out and see what happens. It's still not insta mining. Are you kidding me? How is that even possible? As a person who's not picky, and does not have an OCD, I'm okay with making a hammer. It's fine. 
Well, there is a point where I should have probably stopped decorating this place, but I don't know where that point was. Maybe around there. <laughs> anyway, this is going to be our sacrificial pit. Uh, we are going to need a few items. We're going to need the spawner, we're going to need the grinder and the sacrificial altar itself. I also decided to make an altar for the rituals, which is going to go here. Uh, it's not activated yet, this is why I just have cobblestone. Fine, let's get some items and start doing the sacrifices. I think this should be our general setup. So I have the spawner here and we're going to put the sacrificial altar on top. It should be able to still spawn the mobs that we want because the range is bigger. So it should be fine, I guess. Uh, also, if you put the sacrificial altar here, then you need to put your book on top, which is not something that I want. So we need to transfer that PE outside. This is why I made an energy relay and okay good i did not fall down <laughs> and also i made an energy pedestal which we're going to put it outside the chamber so the pe will be collected by the sacrificial altar it will be beamed to this pedestal and we can just put our book here which will be fine oh and don't mind the wings i had i had to go to another creative world to record a clip for the previous episode and well i'm, I'm stuck with the angel rings i don't have them it's just a visual glitch. I cheated, but in a parallel universe. Okay, so it seems that we are done. I brought a drum of essence, which is hooked up to the mob duplicator using a conduit. I added a lever, these are all facades, so that I can turn off the mob duplicator when the book is not here or we are full of PE. There's no need of spawning mobs and grinding them down when we don't need the PE. So it's good to have a measure of control. The only thing that we're going to need is ethereal glass from extra utilities so that I can get in and mobs cannot get out. Let's make some. It seems if you pulverize lunar ingots, you get that pink lapis. Huh. Okay, that's nice. This is always the scary part. We make the unstable ingot, and then we have 10 seconds to make the moonstone. Let's hope I'm fast enough. Okay, good, 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 good. So this is called ethereal glass. The good thing about this is that you can walk through it and mobs cannot. It's awesome. So let us spawn some pigs and see if this thing works. Nothing? Well, it does work. It needed a little bit of tweaking, but now it works fine. We spawn the pigs, they get grinded, and we get PE. That's awesome. I'm happy. This place was incredibly laggy. When I remove the imaginary time block, lag is gone. Just from four plants. We should not do this near the base. We have around 3000 PE and I thought we should be able to start making the transmutation gem which we are going to need in order to make the oblivion catalyst. This requires only 300 PE and it has 10 uses. So we need to activate the ritual pedestals. So if I remember correctly, I should just right click with the book. No, that's not it. Shift right click with the book. Okay. Easy peasy. I filled in the recipe for the transmutation gem on the pedestals and now we should be able to activate it. So we go to the central pedestal and shift right click again. Yes. Yes, hi. Cool. We have our first transmutation gem. We are going to need 12 Oblivion Catalysts in order to make the Philosopher's Stone. Each Oblivion Catalyst requires 4 of these. And we make one of these by this recipe. And this guy only has 10 uses. So I made 6 of them and I'm not sure if it's going to be even enough. We'll see. It has 10 uses. Why did it make 11? Oh, because you can repair them with liquid XP if you have mending on. But why would you do that? We have 5000 PE and we should be able to make our first Oblivion Catalyst, which also requires a sacrifice. So I made an additional sacrificial altar and I brought a sacrifice. So we should be able to activate you and kill you. Was it too soon? I hope it wasn't. No, it wasn't. Cool. We have our first Oblivion Catalyst. 11 more to go. 
I'll tell you what guys, it takes me around 10 to 15 minutes in order to gather enough PE so that I can make an Oblivion Catalyst. That's the time that I can spend productively, because Oblivion Catalyst is not the only ingredient that we're going to need in order to make the energy condenser. We're also going to need black iron. And how do we make black iron? We're going to need ender biotite, which I already have I think. We're going to need jade and iron. How do we get jade? We get it from an ore which spawns in Erebus. So we need to go to Erebus. And we need to make the portal. We start making the portal by making an offering altar and we offer it one obsidian, one diamond and one emerald. So that we will get the Gaian gem. Then we can make the staff of Gaia. My mistake, we need two of them. Then we are going to need the Gaian keystone. We just make a portal frame and fill it in with leaves. We put the keystone here and we should be able to activate it. Yep. We can go to Erebus, see you on the other side, someone died, <laughs> by mosquito, okay, well I spawned inside the stone so I took some explosions, this is scary, maybe we should stay underground, I just vain mind and here is jade, here is also jade, that was easy. Alright guys, now that we've been to Erebus, we should be able to make black iron. We just need to make this ender crafter or the fake QED and we need a lot of ender pearls. We make a couple of stacks. We need one ender crafter and a lot of these guys. These little guys provide power to the ender crafter and the more of them you have, the faster this guy will work. It will accept them as long as they are three blocks away. This is fine, I guess. So let's see how fast you work. It's not bad. I added more so it should be faster now. It's not bad. It's fine. I can live with that. It seems using the crushing table is a more economical way of turning them into plates. Because otherwise you need two per plate. This is just one. It takes more time. The thing is in order to craft the ultimate crafting table, we are going to need the elite crafting table, then the advanced and then the basic. We're going to need one ultimate crafting table and at least one elite crafting table. That's a lot of tables. So let's start with this one. Basic crafting table. We're out of gold, so... Hi. Now we should be able to make the advanced crafting table. And... Oh, they're here. Sorry, my mistake. Elite crafting table. And one ultimate crafting table. I panicked a little bit because in order to make the basic crafting table, and you need a lot of them, you need a lot of black iron and making these black iron slates is very difficult because you are spending two to get one. You can do this, but this is boring. So <laughs> anyway, uh, the higher tier you go, the less black iron you need, which was very good. This is the recipe and these are the things that I already had. So we are going to need a lot of crystal tine ingots and I just realized they require cobalt and I'm not sure if we have plenty of cobalt because I never went to the nether for mining. Oh, we have 93, that's not bad. We can make 24, 22? I don't know. <laughs> How many do we need? We need 16. Okay, we have plenty, that's fine. Can you make me some? Yes, that's great, awesome. We also make you. The thing is, this method of gathering resources is not paying off because I need a lot of diamonds, I need a lot of cobalt, I need a lot of iron. Whoops. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> so I might as well go to the nether and set up our digital miner because uh, this could take a very long time. Cool. This is much easier. So it seems that apart from Oblivion Catalyst, the Philosopher's Stone is almost done. We also have to think what we need in order to make the energy condenser. So we need 8 of you and 16 more of you. These I cannot make until we get the Philosopher's Stone, but that requires a lot of coal. Hopefully we do have a lot of coal, if I'm not mistaken. Oh yeah, 20,000. Is it enough? <laughs> We'll see. Need to make 64k storage units from Applied Energistics and I'm wondering if you can feed these guys with a hopper. Oh, you can. So it goes here. 
It's not going there. Where is it going then? Oh yeah, it's going here. Okay, fine. Uh, then we have to give you gold, I guess. And give you redstone. So you should be working, right? And it goes here. One day. Oh yeah, cool. Then I don't have to do that manually. Since we still have some time, I was wondering if I can make an exchanger. Because I want to do some decorations and it seems to require a bucket of resonant ender. Don't know why, <laughs> but we can make it easily. I think this is the maximum I'm going to make because we are going to get into Batania very soon. So I will have my rod of the shifting crust. So we have a small issue. Um, I thought I should make a river because it will break the ground and uh, it, it was too flat. But now we have guardians. We are in an ocean biome, but we are not in an ocean monument. And we are at Y level 74. <laughs> they should not spawn. Maybe it's because of Quark. Wait, dude, stop. If it's from Quark, I can just turn it off. Anyhow, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Philosopher's Stone and some crystal tiny ingots. Which is about time because I'm running low on every single resource. Luckily we have plenty of coal because coal was not required for anything. So we are going to need to make a lot of dark matter and then make a lot of red matter. I have no idea how many we need. That's a lot. That's 24 red matters. So we need 72 dark matters, which requires all of these which is all of these. <laughs> That's a lot of coal. I don't know if we have enough. Well, I have to get crafting anyway. And we're out of coal. <laughs> so we got five and a half stacks of these, which should not be enough. Well, instead of 72, we can make 43 of them, which is not enough. So I have to move our digital miner again. I'll be right back. I came to the deep dark and I set this guy to only mine coal because that's the only thing we need. You should not AFK and then go for a shower. System broke down. How? Why aren't you working? I switched the digital miner once and this is just above 8,000 blocks of coal. And we're gonna fortune it. So that gave us 19,000 coal. It's not bad. So we still don't have enough coal. The thing is, I do have enough dark matter. So dark matter is not the problem anymore. I just need this kind of fuel in order to convert the dark matter into red matter. So I have to go to the deep dark again. Hi. 16,000 more coal. I hope it would be enough. Well, now that we have Energy Condenser Mark 1, even though it's not as good as Mark 2, we can make anything that we want. Very easy. Even these stupid crystals. <laughs> I'm so happy. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Energy Condenser Mark II. And we're just gonna duplicate it. Alright guys, I hooked up one of the energy condensers to our applied energistic system and nether stars are currently being exported to it automatically and there are several import buses around it so that whatever we want to copy will be imported back to our applied energistic system. So what we have to do is just this. And we get thousands of each item. Also, I'm very glad that I made this decision to rush for the energy condensers because this removes the requirement for a lot of automation and devices that will, of course, cause lag. We don't need to do them anymore. For example, plastic has EMC. So we don't need our plastic maker to run anymore. We also don't need to make processors anymore. Even the 64K ME storage, that's probably too much. Okay, so now we have 3064k ME storage components, which I guess will be very useful in the future. But in any case, you get the point. We just have to provide our energy condensers with EMC. 
and we are not going to cheat and use the wand of animation, we are going to use it for other stuff, but we are going to go the legitimate way of getting nether stars. We have 88,000 nether stars from one mystical agriculture seed, which wasn't even working during the night because uh, there was not enough light. So we are going to go with mystical agriculture and I have already prepared an area. And this is the area that I have prepared. So everything that you see here has an EMC except the energy crystals and the solar panels. But the lower tier solar panels had EMC and we have plenty of draconium so making them was not a problem. We are going to have 10 nether star seeds, 2 inferium seeds, 1 draconium seed and this one I'm going to keep it for neutronium seed. And I think that should give us plenty of nether stars. I ran it for a little bit and it used to give me like 10 nether stars per second. I thought we'd do it together as well. So we turn you on and you. And this is how fast we're gaining nether stars. Well I left it for around 7 minutes and now we have 94,000 nether stars. So I think the figure of 10 per second is almost correct. Alright guys, I think it's also time to wrap up the episode. I know that since we have EMC, we should be able to finish this mod pack within 5 or 6 episodes from now, but that is not something that I want to do. I want to slow down a little bit, start having fun, and do each and every single quest, and get into each and every mod in details. And the fun part is, since I made you suffer for the last 6 episodes of me rushing through the pack, you get to choose which mod I do next. I think that's fair, right? <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one, bye bye.